Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be trying to paint this wildflower meadow from my photograph that I took of a meadow at Preston Park in Brighton a few years ago. I'm going to paint this in my Etcher sketchbook. It's 100% cotton and cold pressed and it's a really nice paper. I've used washi tape to give myself a frame and I've just drawn in a few flowers here and there in the foreground and um, a high horizon line with trees and bushes. Um, I'm not going to paint my uh, the buildings in the background here. I'm just going to keep it as a meadow. And then I have masked out some of the flowers with masking fluid. And now I'm just washing in the sky with cobalt blue. I'm going to keep the sky nice and simple. Um, it's just that narrow band um, of cobalt blue. And um, making sure it's nice and smooth with my flat brush. Just keeping that horizon kind of fairly straight, but I'm not too worried because I'll be painting my trees in there a bit later. And I'm going to wet in the meadow area. Now I've never painted a meadow like this before, so it's a bit of an experiment, but what I'm going to try and do is put in some strong green to start with, in, with directional brush strokes across the foreground, while the paper's um, sort of mostly wet, I think it's dry in patches, so I should get some soft edges and some hard edges. And then I'll pull some, some colour across. Um, this is sap green, by the way. I'll be using sap green and perylene green um, to build up my greens. And there's a little bit of the perylene green in the foreground, just to add a bit of the darker green um, tone there. I'm going to use, um, I think it's Alizarin Scarlet Lake. It's a Sennelier colour that I made um, from dry pigments, but you can use any red that you like um, to build up that distant glow of poppies. So I'm trying for an underpainting now. Um, I'm not worried about my foreground flowers because I've masked them out. I'm going to mix my cobalt blue with a bit of the red and keep it pure as well and drop in um, sort of blue here and there trying to make my marks a bit more defined and dotted and dashed um, as I come closer towards the foreground. So I'm moving between blue, a sort of purpley blue and this red and a darker sort of red with a bit of the blue in it um, just to get some variety. My white flowers will be produced when I remove the masking fluid. Um, I've also masked out some poppies for some nice um, defined foreground flowers as well. So I'm working backwards and forwards, keeping my brush strokes mostly horizontal with the, fr with the flat brush now, just smoothing things out. It should all dry back a little bit lighter, but I just want this kind of blurry background with fairly nicely defined flowers. While the paint's wet I'll get a bit of texture in using the corner of my plastic card um, so that my foreground flowers, at wild flowers and grasses are a bit more defined. And then inky consistency paint just to spatter in a bit of texture um, it should all soften back. I've got a little bit of that in my sky, but I don't mind because most of the sky will be covered with distant trees. But you can always lay a piece of um, paper over your sky area if you don't want to get spatter onto it. So this is um, a small squirrel mop and I'm using the perylene green and roughing in my tree line. Just keeping it nice and simple with a bit of variation to the height of the background trees. And because my meadow is still damp, um, I should get quite a nice, just a soft transition between um, the dark trees and the meadow colors. 
I don't want the, um, the dark green to bleed into the meadow, so I'm keeping my paint nice and rich and fairly dry. In other words, not too watery. If it was watery, it would probably run into the red of the distant meadow. But as the paint's quite thick, it would just gently soften, but stay where it is. I can use a clean damp brush to soften things back and then using the squirrel mop I'm introducing some darker green um, horizontally through my sketch, through my, uh, my meadow. I think you can see that things are beginning to shape up a little bit more. You can see all the mast areas showing very strongly. And now some red spatter. And I shall leave that now to dry off completely. And here it is from the magic of edit editing. Um, it's nice and dry. You can see it's dried a lot paler and it's beginning to look a little bit like the meadow scene that I, that I want it to. But now it just needs a bit more work. So I have rubbed off all the masking fluid and now I will focus on painting in and enhancing um, all those little flowers. To start with, I'm using very rich um, alizarin scarlet lake to paint in my foreground and midground poppies. So I'm just painting over the masking, the masked areas, um, leaving some little bits of white here and there to make sure I get some variety and have a little bits of white for bits of sparkle and some of the white flowers. So I'm working backwards. I'm using my small calligraphy brush to get in these more slightly more detailed flowers. Um, you can use any brush that's got a nice, a nice point to it, so that you can be sort of reasonably accurate with your, with your shapes, but still keeping it nice and loose. I'm sorry that my arm keeps going in front of the camera there. I think I was trying out a new position for filming, and I think I'd forgotten that if I had my paint palette above the sketchbook that I'd have to lean over the painting. So now I'm dotting in um, more of the poppies uh, because I want the poppies to dominate here. I want this to be mostly a meadow full of poppies um, supported by the drifts of blue and white flowers too. Um, now I've swapped over to my cobalt blue, which is mixed with some white gouache, and I'm using my Matthew Palmer tree and, I think it's a tree and foliage stippling brush, to stipple in um, the drifts of blue flowers amongst the poppies and the white flowers. I think the stippling brush here will give it a different look, sort of different texture to um, the way that I've sort of hand painted in the poppies so that the poppies should still stay dominant. Although I do want plenty of this lovely um, sort of hazy blue flowers to sort of um, underpin the red of the poppies. And now, because I think I want to bring a bit more harmony between the red and the blue, I'm using my stippling brush to put in um, a bit more, slightly stronger um, red drifts of poppies. Um, these will um, lighten up a little bit as they dry. And now it's back to my calligraphy brush with the fine point, any fine pointed brush will do, and mixtures of sap green and perylene green to darken up around the white flowers um, across the bottom and here and there, wherever I think it needs darkening up. And you can see that by negatively painting around the flowers, especially the white ones, um, they're really starting to pop and to become a sort of really nice foreground feature.
this dark sort of um, green grasses and shadows and foliage in the foreground really helps to link back to um, the dark tree line across the top. I was inspired to try this meadow painting after doing the poppy painting um, that I did here with um, I think it was line and wash ink and watercolour on this on here on YouTube a few weeks ago, and I decided to try try to paint a meadow. At the moment, it's just a pure watercolour, but I've got a feeling that once it's finished and it's dry, that I shall probably go in with a black fine liner pen and turn it into a line and wash to define the flowers. Um, at the moment, I don't think I'm accomplished enough or skilled enough at flower painting to be able to um, get them to work by themselves. Um, hopefully that's, that's an eventual aim to be able to practice my flowers enough um, to be able to just paint standalone um, flower paintings like this um, in pure watercolour. But for now, I think I will rely on using the fine liner to finish off my painting and really bring it together at the end. I think I've nearly got enough darks into the foreground and I'm really liking um, the balance at the moment, the way it's looking. I'm especially making sure I get it really nice and dark in the in the corners so that when the tape's removed, um, it looks really effective. Now this is um, white gouache and I'm spattering it across just to bring some light back into the painting because I think I might have just been a little bit heavy handed here and hopefully that light will just lift the painting a little bit. And now that it's just about finished, I'm going to remove the tape. It's washi tape so it should pull off without tearing the paper because it's very low tack craft tape. And I think that looks quite interesting. Um, I think it works really well. I'm very pleased with it. Um, I think it needs a bit more work though. I think once it's completely dry, I'm going to um, go in, as I said, with a fine liner. But first I'm gonna knock back a little bit of that white. I think I spat it on a bit too much and it was overpowering. So. With a tissue, I'm just dabbing off the surplus and leaving enough there just to keep it nice and fresh. And here you can see I've been going in with my Sharpie and my fine liners uh, to darken up the tree line and to outline um, a lot, especially of the foreground and some of the mid-ground flowers and to put in some sort of hints of branches and trees in the background. But I think the most important thing here is to just draw around some of the petals and the poppy shapes, put in a few little um, stems and indications of leaves, that sort of thing. And I'm really enjoying this process. This for me is really adding a lot of depth and interest to my painting and finishing it off quite nicely. If you decide to try this, you could, of course, um, do it the other way around. You could draw in all your flowers with fine liner, waterproof fine liner to start with before you paint. In fact, that may be a more sensible way of doing it. But this is has been an experiment, so it's kind of morphed and, and grown as I've painted it. Um, I've reacted to how it looks and made decisions based on that as to how best to sort of move forward with it. Just some pen, um, some fine liner strokes to get in lots of uh, stems and sort of the directional idea of the growth of the flowers in the foreground. 
and I've decided now to warm it up a bit. Firstly, I'm going to use my small calligraphy brush and drop some gamboge into the centres of my white flowers, um, which will turn them into um, those large sort of oxide daisies. I really like that little touch of yellow just just makes the foreground pop. And finally, a thin pale glaze of watery gamboge across the whole meadow just will warm the whole thing up, add that sunny glow to it and pull the painting together. This might seem a bit drastic and of course you don't have to do this, but I suddenly felt that the whole scene was looking a little bit too too cool so um, if you glaze like this with a very thin transparent colour like gamboge then make sure your painting's completely dry underneath and just put the apply the glaze with very with a soft brush and very minimal brush strokes so that you don't lift up the paint underneath and it will warm up the whole painting and all the other colours will show through the transparent watercolour and give it this lovely sunny glow. And here's the finished meadow and I'm quite pleased with it for my first meadow. Um, I do think it's a little bit overworked um, but I enjoyed the experiment and I think there's a lot of techniques here that I will take forward into my next meadow painting and I'll probably try doing a full size painting at some point soon and see if I can get it to look a little bit fresher than this one. But as it is, I'm very, very pleased with this. Well, I hope you liked it and I hope you found this watching this process useful. Um, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.